This squirrel species tends to live in wealthy Chicago neighborhoods. And this other squirrel species often lives in disadvantaged ones. And that, of course, led to the question of why. They eat yeah. the same food, yeah. they breed the same way, they have the same nesting patterns. We could find virtually no difference other than they seem to separate in space. And it became a story of how did these two decide to divide and conquer Chicago in the way they did. Joel Brown thinks he's finally solved this mystery after an exhaustive study of these dueling squirrels. The fox squirrels, they have this, you know, splendid orange color, which often captures people's imagination. You see the orange tummy, and then the eastern gray squirrel. Sometimes they'll have a charcoal tummy. They vary greatly in their coat color. They vary greatly in the way they appear. Joel started studying Chicago squirrels almost 30 years ago, soon after he moved to the area. He had previously worked with all kinds of exotic animals all over the world. And when I arrived in Chicago, I was looking for study animals. And I was both delighted and surprised that nobody was studying the squirrels in our backyards. Here's probably the most conspicuous piece of backyard wildlife, and nobody was paying attention to them. So we began surveying neighborhoods for fox and gray squirrels, and then we began to realize there's no way that we could literally check all the neighborhoods of Chicago. And so we were kind of inspired then to create a web-based program where we could get Chicagoans to tell us about the squirrels in their neighborhoods. Thousands of these so-called citizen scientists took to the Project Squirrel website, and the data started rolling in. And what we discovered is there were some zip codes that were almost 100% fox squirrels. There were other zip codes that were 100% gray squirrels. And this is when Joel discovered that the squirrels' neighborhood preferences lined up with economics. So we began to kind of peel away the layers, and indeed, the socioeconomic patterns. A reminder, the gray squirrels liked wealthier neighborhoods, and the fox squirrel, the orange guys, liked less prosperous ones. But to further complicate things, fox squirrels could also be found in very wealthy, far-flung suburbs. Those are often characterized by more nature. And even more unusual was a change that Joel was witnessing right at home, in his middle-class suburb of Oak Park. What we called the graying of Oak Park. When I moved here, Oak Park was 80% fox squirrels. And by the time we were analyzing the data, Oak Park had flipped to being almost 80% gray squirrels. So we had a number of hypotheses. Maybe they eat different foods. That did not prove to be the case. Maybe they prefer different, you know, arrangements of the trees or yards or yard sizes. That did not pan out. But what did begin to pan out was the feature of these two squirrels. And in a way, to us, was utterly surprising, but we thought super cool. The critical clues came from those citizen scientists people were telling us things like, it seems that gray squirrels are like city folk, and fox squirrels are like country folk. Or they'll say things like, the gray squirrels seem to chase the fox squirrels. Joel was making similar observations in his lab. It was obvious that the gray squirrel was the superior competitor. It was better at competing for nest sites and competing for food resources. However, this became the important clue. They also appear to be phenomenally skittish in the face of predation. Clap your hands, and they will first run to a tree and then look to see what happens. The fox squirrel, on the other hand, we began to discover its superpower, its ability to manage predation risk. They will, in fact, accost predators. A fox squirrel will actually run up a tree and scream at a red-tailed hawk. Hmm. So the hypothesis began to emerge the gray squirrels live where it's safe. Like those wealthy Chicago neighborhoods. But when predators show up, the fox squirrel stands its ground and the gray squirrel picks up and moves. But what kind of predators are there in Chicago? It turned out at the end of the day, after we ran innumerable statistical analyses, one pattern emerged again and again, and that is Fox squirrels predominate in those neighborhoods where you have conspicuous presence of cats and dogs, particularly cats that are roaming free and dogs that are large and protecting backyards. And in disadvantaged neighborhoods, Joel found there were more outdoor cats and residents were more likely to leave their large dogs outside. And these dogs were a source of security 
quite understandably. It explained then to us why those neighborhoods would have been all fox squirrels. As for Joel's middle-class suburb, Oak Park, it had passed a leash law, and people were ditching their guard dogs for lap dogs. And we're likely to keep them indoors. All of that has created urban environments, at least in Oak Park, that are now safer for squirrels. And because it's safer for squirrels, better for the one. it's better for the gray squirrel at the expense of the fox squirrel. And those wealthy, more rural suburbs? Often the people live on larger lots. They've moved to areas where they feel there's nature. And if there's nature now, of course, there's coyotes and predators. And that then produces these fox squirrel communities. So to a certain extent, you can also use the presence in fox squirrels to learn something then about, you might call the socio-ecology of the neighborhoods. How about other urban areas? Do you think the same pattern would play out in other urban areas? Absolutely. When I now go to other cities and they tell me what kind of squirrels they have in their neighborhood, more often than not, can't tell them much else about their neighborhood, <laughs> but I can tell you about the cats and dogs. Urban nature is made possible in part by the following.